Hello everyone. Welcome to an episode that I, the idea just came up into my head this morning. I was thinking about the uh, stealth camping thing I did where I hiked from the canoe up the hill and I thought I'd like to do something else but I'd like to do something different. So I want to take the golf cart and uh, ride it a short distance from our acreage and camp overnight as stealthily as possible. Now, why do I own a golf cart when I don't even golf? That's a good question, and I'll take a minute or two to talk about that. On an acreage, you kind of need a, a utility machine. A lot of people have a quad or a tractor, that kind of thing. And I've had quads, numerous quads. Um, we've got tractors out here, but I fixed a, a golf cart for a friend of mine and my kids were driving it around saying, Dad, this is fun. We should have one of these. And I thought, bingo. Because at that point they had a go-kart that was way too fast, way too loud. And it was ripping up the grass because of the aggressive tires. I thought, you know what? That's a good idea because it's not as fast as that go-kart. It was stupid fast. And so I went out and bought this golf cart. It's been almost 10 years that we've had it. And this is the most useful machine on the acreage. I put a trailer hitch on it. I'll show you that here. And we have a little utility trailer that we put behind it. And we can haul dirt, grass, lumber, car parts, tires, whatever you want with that trailer. And the golf cart pulls it all just fine. And it doesn't rip up the grass. It has smooth tires. I put some little, slightly more aggressive tires on the back of the golf cart, these here. They got more tread than the original tires, which are these here. If the grass gets at all wet, these tires are useless. You, you, it just spins and you can't move. So I put these on and that made a huge difference and this still doesn't tear up the grass. This one is gas powered and I'm glad I went gas and not electric. I know several people with electric golf carts and about every anywhere from four to seven years they have to replace all of their batteries to the tune of over two thousand dollars. Some some of them are very expensive and this thing I put twenty dollars of gas in it per year if that um, when we first got it and my kids were all small and loving driving it around, they were driving it every single day in the summer. So I was using more than a full tank of gas per year, so a little over $20. But now that the kids are older and driving their own cars, they're not driving this thing as much, if at all. So not even, I'm not even putting $20 of gas in it. So I highly recommend a gas unit. And just, just a well, it's so, so universal, and you can leave the key in it all the time on, and it doesn't, we left it on for over a week one time and it didn't kill the battery. So you just jump in it and step on the gas and go. There's no gears, there's no clutch. You just have forward and reverse, and that's it. It's very simple. So this has been a very, very useful machine on the acreage, and there was a time where it was being used by me every single day. Not so much anymore. But again, because the kids are, are older now and they're not using it as much. But they used to pull them each other around on all kinds of stuff. It was pretty crazy. They had a lot of fun with it. And so I'll just show you a couple of add-ons. I put in a, a fuel gauge. You can see I got lots of gas. I filled it up this spring and that's, that's all we've used so far. And those are your only controls, forward and reverse. This here little knob is the choke. You just you only need that when it's cold, sitting overnight kind of thing. And it's pretty simple to maintain. There is a, a battery. It's, it's We use a car battery and I finally changed it this year. We, we've had this thing, like I said, almost 10 years. And there's the fuel tank. It's a fair size. It's probably about 20 liters, I'm going to say. And very reliable. I change the oil every couple of years. So maintenance is 
pretty minimal. And I also put this rear view mirror on. It's kind of handy. We do live near uh, a gas station. So I'm able to get fuel either for this unit or I'll pick up a jerry can of gas for one of the lawnmowers or whatever. Um, so this, this has been very handy. So I use the rear view mirror for the short distance that I'm actually on the road. And I will need this today um, going to my camping spot, which I have not checked out. So where I'm going is every subdivision in Parkland County has what we've nicknamed, I'm not sure what the official name is, but we've called them, we call them park reserves. So if you have a subdivision that's either 80 acres or 180 or 160 acres, they set aside a certain percentage where no one can build on it and it's just forest. And people are allowed to go for walks and there's usually a quad trail going through it kind of a thing. And so there, there is an area like that on our subdivision. And so I'm gonna go down there on this golf cart. Now they're not as aggressive off-road as a quad, but there, there are websites and forums out there all about off-roading golf carts and they put lift kits on them, they put big tires on them. And what's hilarious is we took this out to our cabin a few years ago. My son was on a quad and I was following him on this and he couldn't get away from me on these trails. Like I was totally, and we were climbing hills in the bush and I was squeezing between trees. So they're a very capable unit. I'm really impressed with these things. You know, you can use these straps to hold shovels, rakes, that kind of thing for doing yard work. It's, it's so handy. And so I'm gonna drive this cart down the road it's not very far, it's less than a kilometer to the trail. And the trail, I haven't been down that trail since winter time on my snowmobile. So I'm gonna bring a saw, a hand saw, just in case if a tree fell over, I might have to cut it. But there is the odd person on a quad that goes through that trail, so hopefully they've cleared any trees that have fallen. But if not, I'm, I'm ready, I'm prepared for that. So I'm gonna use the same tent I used last time um, pretty much the same gear. I'm gonna bring a cooler this time because I do have more storage. I'm, I'm not backpacking. And uh, what else can I say? I'm gonna try and find a spot around a corner, nestled in some trees somewhere. Um, but it's kind of hard to be stealthy with a white and black golf cart. Golf cart. It's uh, very visible, so. We'll see. I'm kind of looking forward to it. Something else I forgot to mention that's really handy on these golf carts is the storage at the back other than those straps. This basket here, I always keep booster cables and a tow rope in case I got to boost a car or pull something like a tractor or a car that won't start. We have used this cart to pull a dead car and I even pulled uh, a tr my flat deck trailer with 1,500 pounds of lumber. I pulled it halfway across my yard, probably about 300 feet. Uh, it struggled, but it did it. So it's such a universal and versatile vehicle. So, so far, what do I got packed? I got my handsaw in case I got to cut some trees. I got the tent that I used last time, a little lawn chair, the bear spray, and that's a, a stove, which I will talk about when I'm using it tonight when I make my evening popcorn. I'm gonna fill up my backpack with what I need and a cooler and then I'm gonna head out. I will be leaving shortly. I've got the golf cart packed. I don't have to go that far and my neighbors will recognize the cart. We don't drive it around the subdivision really but um, they've seen it in my yard for many years so seeing me drive by on the road shouldn't be a big deal. I'll be leaving in a little while, but I'm basically ready to go. I got my backpack sitting here. Um, I don't think that looks too obtrusive. I'm gonna have a GoPro on my hat and one hanging off the mirror there. So you folks can see what I'm seeing. I've also packed a little lawn chair here, um, bear spray, my thermocell and a camera bag with a few camera items in it. So I am bringing bear spray 
with me because there has been cougar and bear spotted in this area in the last few months. So just one extra precaution. I am very close to home where I'm going to be camping. I could actually run home if something went wrong with the cart. Wouldn't be a big deal. And that's the plan. part of this trail. <laughs> Not only are the trees growing into the trail, and the trail is very bumpy, but it, it's a side hill and it's very difficult side hilling this. Okay, I'm just gonna stop for a second here. Oh, so, one of my neighbors did see me leave my acreage. He was walking right there. Uh, I just waved and kept going, just like, this is normal. I'm pretty sure he would have seen all the gear in the back. The cooler gives it away. I should have covered that with something, but whatever. <laughs> He's just gonna shrug it off, I'm sure. But anyways, um, I'm about to climb this hill. So I'm really going to boot it up there. Uh, that trail was surprisingly clear. There's not a lot of quad traffic in here. You can see that the grass, there's just barely a depression in the grass. So uh, lucky for me, no trees had fallen across the trail. So I got to boot it up this hill. It's kind of, it's short and steep. I've done it on my snow machine a million times, no problem. Um, but let's see how the golf cart does. Well, that was almost too easy. 
that hill doesn't look very steep but in a vehicle that's not designed to go up steep hills uh, I was a little worried but no this thing is very capable so now I got to figure out which way I'm gonna go um, I just need a minute here I think I found my spot. It's right next to this fence. Once I cross that, I'm on private property, not public property. And uh, there's a power line here, but that doesn't bother me. And um, for those of you in Canada, you would know, uh, so this pole here, I don't know if you can see it, there's red markings on it reflective markings that marks the trans mountain pipeline which is being twinned very soon they're already working on it um, in the Edmonton city limits and this runs right in front of my house uh, in my neighbor's backyards so that that's going to be torn up or this area will be torn up a bit next year or maybe the year after I'm not sure so anyways I'm going to camp right here I have a view I know there's always wildlife along here and I took a walk over here just ahead of the where the golf carts parked and you can see where deer have been bedding down at night there is still a bit of wind but uh, the forecast calls for 30 percent chance of rain which doesn't say much because when I took the canoe and hiked that big hill there was like a a 40% chance and it poured and I still haven't waterproofed the tent so um, here's the hoping it doesn't rain but it doesn't matter um, I was fine in that tent I didn't get wet so I think I'm gonna set up but I might before I set up I might walk around here a bit just scope out the area it's rough going with the golf court it's just very slow and um, this field has not been plowed probably in 10 years so it's pretty rough but I want to put my tent here so that I can look out the window and watch for wildlife which would be really cool so I'm just gonna take a short gander around here and uh, have a look around there's the golf cart From a distance, you may not notice it. There's no evidence of any recent ATV activity on that trail. It's probably been a week or more since anyone's been down it. But I know in the winter, um, you know, I'm, I'm one of the sledders, snowmobilers that uses that trail and come out here. So I know in the winter it gets a lot of use. Summer doesn't look doesn't look like it. And I'm not a big fan of the quads, anyways. I mean, they have their purpose. You know, ranchers, farmers, they, they need them. Uh, they're very useful for that. Hunters, trappers, and people use them recreationally. But boy, do they tear up the trails. Those and side by sides. And this isn't a rant. Um, oh, though I will say. By my dad's place, there's a place called Hell's Half Acre. That's what they named it because the trails are just shredded from off-road use. 30 years ago, I used to go snowmobiling there and you could go 
as fast as you wanted down those trails. They were perfectly smooth. And now they're just, it's really rough. And you know, the, the environmental footprint on the ground of a snowmobile is almost non-existent by springtime. So that's my little, I guess it is a bit of a rant on ATV use. But again, I don't begrudge anybody that goes quadding. I, I totally get it. I've done it. Snowmobiling is more fun though, and all the sledders are going, yeah, you get it. Um, I, my family and I, I've taken my kids out here dozens and dozens of times since they could ride, uh, you know, nine, ten years old. And they've, they've had a lot of fun out here. We've really enjoyed this. I've shot some film out here before. And uh, I like this area. I can still hear the highway from where I am now. We're actually between two highways. But very peaceful. And I think that's where I'm going to set up my tent. If you didn't know that golf cart was there, you wouldn't know it's there. That didn't take too long to set up. The grass is pretty tall here. It's pretty soft. I hope it's a flat surface in there. It felt like there's a big bump on one side. We'll see when I get in there, I guess. But uh, nothing wrong with this spot. The closest house would be, I don't know, probably a half a kilometer. So. I don't think I'm going to be bothering anybody here tonight. This is gorgeous, so I'm going to pack everything in my tent and get set up in there. And then, uh, I don't know, I'll see. The sun's going to go down in about 15 minutes. So maybe I'll explore a bit more. I don't know. Uh, I'm not tired enough to go to sleep yet. So. Maybe I'll just hang out for a bit. All right, in the tent, I haven't unpacked anything yet, but uh, check out the view. I'm gonna flip the camera around here. That is my view. I hope to see some wildlife. I guess I should be a little quieter. The wind is blowing from behind me in that direction. So if they're coming from the west, which is that way, I should see something come across here later, I hope. We'll find out. One of the things I'm surprised about, uh, one, no mosquitoes. I brought my thermosal, it's in the golf cart. Um, we, I know it got down to plus one Celsius uh, a few nights ago. Maybe it hit zero out here. <laughs> I haven't had one mosquito, which is really good. And in this tall grass, I should have been eaten alive. So that was, that's a blessing. And I'm actually kind of warm, so I'm just going to chill out here for a while. Get my bedroll set up in my sleeping bag. And I'll keep an eye out for wildlife. Here's the view out my side window. I've got that door in the tent zip shut. 
and that's the other window. And there's something... I could... Uh, I'm a bit paranoid, but I could swear I heard a quad. But it must have been just something on the highway. <laughs> One trick I've learned with these self-inflating mattresses, they seem to take forever to inflate. They are a bit slow, but... I learned a trick if if it just won't fill and it only does like maybe halfway close the the valves and lay on it for a while five minutes ten minutes whatever and then get off the mattress and open the valves and you'll hear the air whoosh right in so it and you can even do that a couple more times and it'll fill right up real nice and then if it's got too much in it you can let some out so I, I'm a real fan of these mattresses. Works great. And for those of you going north fans, uh, if you remember episode two when we first took off on the trip, that first night when we were camping, uh, I mean, not only was it hilarious that I was warm and dry in my tent and Justin was soaking wet, <laughs> but I was also using my USB powered fan to cool off and I have it with me. I love this thing. And you know, I've never tested it with my power bank um, to see how long it goes for. I probably should one day, but it's, it's pretty handy. I came out here to get my bear spray and my thermosel. I saw one mosquito, oh, the horror. And I should grab my camera bag too, in case it rains. It's pretty nice out here. Sun has just set. No spectacular sunset tonight. Do you hear that? It's raining. I'm hoping it goes over and I'm hoping it's just this cloud here. It's raining very lightly, so I'm not that worried about it, but <clears throat> it's tough being a meteorologist, huh? Yeah, it's already letting up. And the mosquitoes just came out, like lots of them. So I don't know what that's all about. Kind of weird. It's getting too dark to see. The camera can see better than I can right now. I don't see any wildlife out there. Well, it's starting to let up on the rain. It's almost stopped. I want to make my midnight snack coming up here. And that is this. Remember this from the previous stealth camp? So I'm going to do that again and in the morning I'm going to make something I'm going to make something different for breakfast. But uh and I've never tried it doing this new recipe that I have I won't give it away yet. But uh looking forward to it. So once this rain stops, then I'll uh, fire up the stove and make some popcorn. You hear that? It's still raining. raining again but it's pretty light rain so I'm not worried all right I am ready to set up my stove I'm gonna use the back of the golf cart and uh, we're gonna make some popcorn here so hang tight 
I'm gonna unpack the stove here. I've used this a few times. My wife is a huge fan of this stove. She took it camping. She loved it. That fits real nice there. I'll just get this strap out of the way. I don't want to talk too loud because I could hear some kids that way. There's an acreage over there, but hopefully they can't see my lights. I'm not quite on the peak of the hill. I'm a little behind it, so I don't see lights from their house, so I should be okay here. To set up this stove, I've got to flip this burner over. And then you push this lever down to lock position. Turn the knob to on. And that's it. Now let me just turn it off. And I'll show you the butane canister that it uses. So you can buy these at most camping supply stores. And uh, my only issue with this stove, I used it last summer, um, summer of 2019, on going north. Um, these canisters don't last very long if you really got the heat up high. So something to remember, and I, I, I don't remember exactly how many meals we made uh, with each can, but always keep a spare. Okay. Oh. Well. I wonder if this saw being here is causing a problem. Let's try this again. Oh. I've got to put something underneath the stove because this lock lever is getting pushed up. It's got no choice. Well, maybe this will work. Okay. Let's make some popcorn, huh? Okay, I'm gonna turn that down. That's pretty strong. It's supposed to shake like mad once you hear it. Sizzling. So I've got it on about medium. Some of you know if you watch my canoe trip videos that I'm a big fan of the Coleman stove. And I, I still am. In fact, If I have enough space in the vehicle when I'm camping, I'll take both this stove and the Coleman stove. screaming. Okay, great. I'm gonna let this cool down for a bit. And uh, then I'll open it up and we'll have some popcorn.
I love popcorn. That was good popcorn. Um, and at that time, it basically popped every single kernel. There was like two or three left in there. I was really impressed with that. So, I'm gonna pack this up for the night. And uh, I'm obviously not putting it in the tent. I'm gonna leave it out here. Along with this, I, I, I don't want to put food in the tent. And this isn't a car, I can't lock it up from animals. So I'm gonna leave it in here. I'll put it in the storage basket here with my frying pan. And uh, I'm gonna leave the cooler here. I'm just gonna take a water with me into the tent. And uh, Probably be going to sleep shortly. And that, that noise I heard in the tent, what I, I thought might have been a, a coyote, I heard it again and it, it was a goose. So there's geese flying over. There was just a, a couple of them probably. Um, there is water nearby, there's a lake nearby. And uh, they might just be coming from there, don't know. Can't imagine them going south quite yet. It's not that cold. It's not fall yet, but we're close. Anyways, the popcorn, popcorn popped really well and uh, looking forward to making breakfast in that tomorrow morning. I'm probably gonna get some sleep now. So I was pretty impressed with the golf cart today with the terrain I was driving through and the hills, no problem. And, uh, so far I've had nobody out here, and I haven't seen any animals or wildlife, but we'll see what the morning brings. I don't know what's with my luck and rain, and the forecast, this was supposed to be 30%, 30%. Those weekend meteorologists, eh, they need some work. But I'm staying dry, it's not dripping in here yet. So it is what it is. <laughs>